The best way to improve your writing is to read, but no one can read all the books in the world, which is why I've got you covered. Hi guys, I'm Marilene. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be covering five fiction books you should read to improve your writing. So book number one is Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. This is probably the most well-written book I have ever read, which is probably why it won the best of the Booker's Prize. So this book follows Salim Sinai, who is born at the exact time of India's independence and his life is inextricably linked to whatever happens to India. It is a funny book with magic realistic elements, um, metafiction, allegory, all of those good things. So what this book will teach you is writing style and narrative voice. The writing style in this book is stunning. I mean, it's Salman Rushdie, of course, it's stunning. You can read every page in this book and see it happen before you. It is entertaining and beautiful and flowing. And also this is a jam-packed narrative. So to maintain that, beautiful writing style and coherency with a book that is kind of bulging at the seams is amazing. And then also narrative voice. The way that this book is written is unlike any other book. And that's really what you want when you write something. You want your individual uh, narrative voice, your voice as a writer to stand out. And that is done really well in this book. So I will put the summary and extract that I chose to illustrate my points in a document down below and you'll also find links to all of these books in the description box. Next up is Open City by Teju Ko. So this book takes the form of a walk through New York and Brussels and it has a very diasporic theme. It's about a young Nigerian doctor in America kind of trying to come to terms with what America is like. So this book will teach you great descriptions and using setting for a multitude of purposes. So the setting in this book is so intimately related to the character that they are indistinguishable. And also the um, setting is used the symbolism in the setting and the things that the character sees in the setting are used so well to convey the theme. Number three is of course Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. You can see my copy is a little um, worse for wear but that's because I've lent it to so many people because I just want everyone in the world to read this book. So what you'll learn from this book is creating beloved characters. So this is actually eight books, this is because I want to recommend the whole series and not just this one. Um, but I'm just going to show this one and tell you what this one is about. So it is essentially an assassin that has been taken prisoner because obviously being an assassin is illegal. And then she is taken out of the mines where she's held prisoner to go fight in a champion's tournament for the crown prince against a lot of other criminals basically they're not all criminals but people with skills in the championing business um so for anyone who's read throne of glass they will agree that these characters completely consume your life like i'm still hung up over dorian and adian and the series ended last year so if you want to learn how to create a cast of growing characters, I mean, every book, there are more and more characters, and yet each of them are still distinct, have their own personalities and are very complex. So if you want to study how to create such beloved, complex, multidimensional characters, then this is definitely the series for you. You can see I have all of them right over there and Sarah's other books as well. So number four is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. So what will this book teach you? Well diversity and representation done right. We very fortunately live in an era where mainstream has become aware of the fact 
that most of the people in the world don't find themselves represented in a lot of media. So a lot of authors try to jump on the bandwagon and do representation, but kind of do more harm than good. So I think it could only be in your best interests to learn how to do diversity and representation well, and also do it authentically if you're going to do it. Just a side tip. So this book is about six people who try to break into a military stronghold which has never been broken into in order to rescue a hostage. They do this for money, um, but eventually things become a little more important than just the money. So within its main cast of characters, Six of Crows has various different ethnicities, cultures, religions, sexualities, body types, you name it, it's there. And it's not just side characters, it's that main cast of characters, you can find everything there. What's great about this is that the character's background makes sense in terms of contemporary issues of culture and race, class, things like that. So it's not just a willy-nilly representation, it actually makes sense with the world. And the world building in this book is also fantastic. So yeah, I would really, really recommend this book. The LGBTQ plus relationships get as much attention and representation development as their heterosexual counterparts. So really, if you want to learn how to do the representation and diversity thing right, and you want to learn how to create a kick-ass world, then this is definitely the book for you. The last book I want to recommend is The Savior's Champion by Jenna Morrissey. I don't have the physical copy of this book, I only have the ebook and the cover doesn't look very nice on my tablet. So I'll find a picture of the beautiful cover and put it up somewhere on the screen. So this book is about the savior who is the goddess of the realm, but she is a mortal. Not a mortal, but she walks among them. Um, and she has come of age to marry and so a lot of men enter a tournament to win her hand and the main character Tobias enters because the money will help him save his family. So what this book will teach you is unapologetically realistic writing. This is adult dog fantasy which means that the people reading it are adults. And I see a lot of books that are for adults, but they kind of don't show you any, everything. They try to protect you. You shouldn't assume that your reader is a sensitive child if you're not writing children's books. So what this book does is it gives you the real reaction, the real thoughts, real actions and words that adults have in situations, you know? The people in this book react the way any other adult would react if they're put in a tournament with like 11 other men trying to kill them. Um, so this is why I think this is a must read if you want to write anything that is unapologetic and unfaulted and just out there and it doesn't push your foot around. So that's all I have for you guys for today. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a comment. I have a part two prepared, but I'm not going to put it up if you guys don't want it. So please let me know in the comments. Also, tell me which books you would recommend for writers and if you have any requests for future videos. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like and a share. And also, if you want content like this in the future, you have to hit that subscribe button. If you want an email notification to your inbox as soon as I upload, then you have to click that little bell button down there. You can also find me on my website, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter and Facebook. All the links are listed below and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!